name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is a grain from a balance, or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things, and you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that are, and loathe nothing that you have made. 
for what you hated you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it or be preserved had it not been called forth by you? But you spare all things because they are yours. O Lord and lover of souls, for your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore, you rebuke offenders little by little. Warn them and remind them of the sins they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose 
and every effort of faith. And the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your mind suddenly or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. A couple of announcements this evening. First of all, a reminder, it is the fifth weekend of the month, and is our custom, the Knights of Columbus will lead a rosary after Mass for the sick, and that will begin shortly after Mass concludes. So if you have someone sick or someone who's a shut-in that you wish to especially pray for, please consider joining them. Second of all, a reminder about the Holy Day coming up, All Saints Day on Tuesday, November the 1st, a Holy Day of Obligation. And um, the Masses, I will be celebrating an English Mass on Monday evening at 5.30, a Vigil Mass for the Holy Day, as well as Tuesday at 12 noon, and then there will be a Mass in Spanish at 7 p.m. on Tuesday. All Souls Day, the Masses in English are at 8.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m., and the Mass in Spanish at 
8 p.m. That is, of course, all in the bulletin on the website and so forth. Please don't forget the holy day. And uh, let's turn to the gospel for a moment. Because Christ's encounter with Zacchaeus is very much a parable in action. It illustrates the whole meaning of Christ's incarnation. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. Christ's whole life on earth was dedicated to bringing people back into friendship with God and to establishing his church to continue that mission throughout history. Now, indeed, in his encounter with Zacchaeus, he is seeking and saving what was lost. We hear that Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector, and many of you have heard me speak about before how these Jewish folks who were tax collectors in Roman-occupied Palestine were viewed by their fellow Jews, first of all, as collaborators with an occupying power, but second of all, because of the way they were paid by the Roman occupation authorities. The Roman occupation authorities would have told Zacchaeus, you could need to collect this much tax. And the way Zacchaeus got his money was by collecting more than that. And he got to keep whatever the overage was. And so when it says he was a wealthy man, it was because he had stolen from and extorted his neighbors. And later on in the gospel, when he says, if I have extorted anything from anyone, well, he has, I shall repay it four times over. This is the good news of Jesus Christ, that in him, even when we were lost, as Zacchaeus was, we can once again be reconciled and redeemed and live in friendship with God. Our sins can be forgiven and we can become what we were created to be, children of God and members of God's family. Original sin had shattered the relationship between the human family and God. Humanity rebelled against God, disobeying the law that he had built into our human nature. And as a result, we became lost and the rebellion spread. We had tried to achieve happiness by our own power without God in our lives, but that is impossible because we were created to live in communion with God. And our happiness, both on this earth and in heaven, depends upon living in friendship with God. Christ came to rebuild that friendship, to reconcile that broken relationship between God and humanity. That was his mission. And whenever people trusted him enough to let him accomplish this mission in their lives, like Zacchaeus did, then they began to experience deep and lasting peace. I dare say there is no doubt that Zacchaeus found far more satisfaction in giving back the money that he had extorted through unfair taxes than he had found in taking it to begin with. And Jesus wants to do that for all of us as well, to bring us back into a right relationship with God, to give us the courage to live as we ought to live so that we can experience the satisfaction that we were meant to experience. And I hope we all want to experience more deeply this transforming power of Christ's presence in our lives. Because truly, when Christ went and had this encounter with Zacchaeus, it transformed Zacchaeus, fundamentally. Certainly, an excellent way to experience that transforming power of Christ's presence in our lives is to help others experience it too. That's what Zacchaeus did. Jesus reached out to him. He came into Zacchaeus' life. And Jesus has also reached out to each of us. He has made us Christians and members of his church, his mystical body. Zacchaeus responded by welcoming Jesus into his home. 
And we too welcome Jesus. We welcome him into our lives whenever we pray or whenever we come to Mass, and especially when we receive him in Holy Communion. But the encounter between Jesus and Zacchaeus did not end there. Salvation had not yet come to Zacchaeus' household. The full power of Christ's grace had not yet been unleashed in his life. Only after Zacchaeus promised to spread his wealth to those around him instead of hoarding it for himself, only then, when he said that he would turn his selfishness into self-giving, only then, when he let God's goodness toward him affect his actions toward others, only then did Jesus say to him, Today salvation has come to this house. And so this week, we should each try to spread whatever wealth we have received in life. It might be our time, it might be our talent, it might be our treasure to those around us. And combat our selfish tendencies by turning those selfish tendencies into self-giving actions. When we receive Christ in the Eucharist, today let us humbly ask him to show us how we can let his goodness affect our actions this coming week. And he'll let us know something. Try to follow through on what he tells you. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now lift up our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father. That the Holy Catholic Church may continue to welcome those who seek forgiveness and inner peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who direct business and industry may be generous and just. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That sinners may be drawn back to the sacrament of penance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be grateful for the grace of forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, for the hospitalized and the homebound, and for their caregivers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may know the mercy of God who created them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you grant these prayers which we make through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, We hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. So with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith the charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Jacques our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, with kind admittance to your kingdom. There we help to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that, renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, we love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.